Tonight, we're very happy to report the East Troublesome Fire that is the second largest ever in Colorado is 100% contained. But there are now questions about whether better forest management could have prevented such devastation. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is going 360. Their stories are as harrowing go! Go! as they are heartbreaking. There were flames all around the neighborhood. Grabbed the dog and ran as fast as I could. It's been home for 46 years. The kids were born and raised here. Forces of nature are the subject of some of the big screen's biggest blockbusters. Earthquakes on the West Coast, tornadoes in the Midwest, and for heavily wooded areas like Colorado, Mother Nature's fury often comes in the form of wildfire just like it did this year. I mean, we had the three biggest fires in Colorado's history this summer. That's Colorado State Forest Service Director Mike Lester. Let's begin this 360 with him. Our forests are not in particularly good shape. Lester says a lack of forest management in Colorado is leading to extremes. It's not a surprise that it happened. It's just a surprise when it happened. So why the extremes? Lester says it's complicated, but attributes massive wildfires primarily to three things. First, droughts are more prevalent, leading to longer wildfire seasons and more insect infestations and dead timber. A lot of our key insects, like a mountain pine beetle, for example, they're kept in check by really cold temperatures early in the season. We haven't seen much of that in the last 20 years or so. Second, greater suppression of fires because more and more homes are popping up in the wildland urban interface. Once you start suppressing fire, you start changing the fuel loads. About half of Colorado's population Roughly 3 million people live in the wild and urban interface right now. And third, a lack of forest products industry in Colorado, logging, furniture makers, etc., who could clear out much of that fuel load. Mechanical, thinning, logging, that type of thing. Oh, I would agree. That's Dan Ruffin. In 25 years as a home builder in the mountains, he's built more than 35 log cabins. When I was building log houses, all my logs that I got were standing dead timber. He's witnessed firsthand the impact of not clearing out dead timber and this year. Okay, this is how close the fire came to our place. He nearly became a victim of the East Troublesome around. Fire in Grand County. Right to the cement foundation. And why I didn't catch the house or the garage on fire, I don't know. He says there's no doubt the lack of timber industry is leading to overgrowth and devastation. I know there were a lot of timber sales that were halted from the environmentalists. They went out and put spikes in the trees and stuff to stop. And then when the beetle kill came through, it killed all those trees that they were trying to save. From an environmental perspective, many groups have now relaxed their opposition to force thinning projects. A Sacramento Bee investigation revealed that while environmental groups once routinely used the courts to block or delay forest thinning projects, many have now started working with the logging industry. The president of the California Forestry Association recently wrote the vast majority of the mainstream environmental community is on board. We've been working hard together and have good partnerships. Many environmental groups now concede it's not just climate change causing catastrophic wildfires, but poor forest management in states like Oregon, California, and Colorado. I don't know if this could have been prevented because there's fires every year in Colorado, but th this is like decades of not being touched and managed. That's Colorado native Amy Fisher, who believes the state must fund and support businesses that reclaim, recover, and repurpose beetle kill and other dead timber. Why don't they let builders come in and clear out the old and, and repurpose it and use it to build new homes? She just toured several homes where beetle kill timber was used. It's gorgeous when it is. The stairs are made out of it. The frame, the trim around the doors, it's gorgeous. Her fear is what will happen if we don't act. It's going to keep happening. There's places that haven't burned yet, and it's just a matter of time. State foresters say those beetle kill trees are not more flammable, but because of the volume. It's a lot of dead fuel. It's a lot of dry fuel. But once it ignites, it's much harder to predict its behavior. It's much harder to predict where it's going to go. That was the trouble with the East Troublesome Fire when it exploded overnight from 10 to 20,000 acres to over 100,000 acres. No one, not even those with the most knowledge of wildfires, knew where it would go or what kind of destruction it was capable of. Instead of being a low to moderate intensity fire, they get to be catastrophic fires. In Grand County. We're survivors. I can't imagine going anywhere else. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7.